Howdy, y'all, for the last time today. And y'all, after I had my very late lunch of uh, vegetable soup, which was delicious, I had a sweet tooth and wanted something sweet to eat. And I started looking through all my cabinets and I couldn't find nothing sweet. And way back and way up high, I could barely reach it, I saw that view right there. I thought, hmm, that looks like chocolate. <laughs> so I pulled it out, and that's what it is right there. Dark chocolate sea salt caramels. I don't know where it came from. I don't remember buying it. And it's been there a long time because it was at a spot where I never go to. But y'all, it's almost empty. <laughs> now, it hadn't been open when I found it, but now it's almost empty. That stuff is good. And it's twelve. it was 12 ounces. It's probably four ounces left. But that's, that's my rambling for this video. We got three chapters left in 1 Corinthians, and I'm going to finish them. We're going to finish that book and move on to 2 Corinthians tomorrow if there is a tomorrow I'm so ready for the rapture I've had a good day I, this is my fifth video today <laughs> and you may not get but two tomorrow we probably will just get two tomorrow but I kind of got behind on my work today and I got work I'm going to be up to three o'clock this morning working on the computer uh, tomorrow morning working on the computer because I hadn't I just now turned the computer on and I got a lot of work to do, so it'll be a 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. night tonight. <laughs> I'm going to have toothpicks propping my eyeballs open around 2 o'clock, but it'll get done. Get her done. And it's, I think he eating that, uh, Vegetable soup warmed me up more than this sweater did. I, I'm not wearing my stocking hat anymore. <laughs> or maybe the sun shining on the house all day warmed it up. I don't know what happened. I don't even know what the temperature is. But I've been cold all day. Got this sweater at one of my trips to Ukraine. My last wife was Ukrainian, is Ukrainian. And while she and I was married, I went there two times to meet her family and to just kind of see the place. I've been there six times, four times before I met her on business when I was still working. And then I had a Ukraine girlfriend when I lived in England. But she and I never met in Ukraine. We would meet in Warsaw, Poland. We had three vacations together, and each time we met in Warsaw, Poland, she could go to Warsaw without it, a visa, and I could go anywhere in uh, Europe, Eastern or Western Europe, without a visa. So she picked Warsaw, Warsaw, and we had three vacations there. And then I had another Ukrainian girlfriend. Oh, I had, yeah. I can't remember. I can't remember her name. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> it's the same as my Ukrainian wife's name. That was about six or eight months. She lived in Houston, and I lived south of Houston. And I don't remember how we met, but. Uh, we met and we were boyfriend and girlfriend for, I don't remember, six, seven, eight months. And we're still friends on Facebook, but she, she had married an American man and then divorced him. She moved to America when she got married and then divorced him and was living in Houston by herself. And she and I met and she's not dating anybody now. I don't think she's interested in men anymore. But she and I still talks. And then 
I thought there was another one, but maybe not. I met a girl from Russia. That she she was 19 years old living in Houston, and I was that wasn't that long ago. That was in 2017, so six years ago. So she is six plus now. She's 25 years old now, and I'm almost 71. So there was a huge age difference. We had a lot of fun together. Uh, but she eventually went back to Russia. Anyway, I don't know why I got talking there. Got no idea. I forgot how I got down that path. But anyway, that's all over with. Just me and Callie now, Kitty Callie now, and she's sitting right here by me. Let me stop my chabbering and start reading. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, have be it in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth, prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation for and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied, for greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except ye except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? And even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. Therefore, I know there or it may be so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the mentioning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian and that speaketh and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Else, when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say amen at the giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest? For thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Bam, y'all. Right there. There you go. Brethren, be not children in understanding, how be it in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. 
Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come, and those that are unlearned or unbelievers, Will they not say that ye are mad? But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation? Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophet speak two or three, and let the other judge. But if anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also said the law. Modern day churches need to read that scripture. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. What? Came the word of God out from you? Or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Bam, y'all. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brother, brethren, covet to, prof covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also you are saved, and by the gospel is the only way you can be saved. That was, that was something I added, not something in the Bible. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of that first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. Bam, yo, that's part of, part of the gospel right there. And that he was buried. Bam, that's part of the gospel, y'all. And that he rose again. Bam, y'all, that's part of the gospel. The third day, according to the scripture, scripture prophesied, scripture uh, prophecy fulfilled. Bam, y'all. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present but some are fallen asleep. That means they died. some of them died that saw him 
alive after he was killed. After that, he was seen of James, then of, the, of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me also, talking about Paul, as one, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. That was his past before Jesus met him on the Damascus Road and changed him forever. But by the law of grace, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was in me. Bam to that, y'all. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Bam again, y'all. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain, and your faith is also vain? Yea, we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since man came for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end, when, the, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of, to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all and all. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized from the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. I, if after the manner of men I have fought with beasts of Ephesus, what advantage advantageth it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink. For tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. 
awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain, it may chance of wheat. <coughs> <clears throat> or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, <clears throat> and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown <clears throat> in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. <coughs> and so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul <clears throat> the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And is the earthy such, or they also that are earthy? And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this moral shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Chapter 16 of 1 Corinthians. I'm going to get a drink of water, y'all. Hang on. <clears throat> Now, concerning <clears throat> the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. 
up on the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And when I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, them will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. And if it be meet that I'll go also, they shall go with me. Now I will come unto you, where when I shall pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through Macedonia, and it may be that I will abide, yea, and winter with you, that ye may bring me on my journey, whithersoever I goeth. And I, for I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permits. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. Now if Timotheus come, see that he may be with you without fear, for he worketh the work of the Lord, as I also do. Y'all been looking at me cockeyed there. I can tell. Let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him forth in peace, that he may come unto me, for I look for him with the brethren. As touching our brother Apollos, I greatly desired him to come unto you with the brethren, but his will was not at all to come at this time. But he will come when he shall have convenient time. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that in it, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. That's pretty good. If you want to be addicted to something, be addicted to the ministry of the saints. That ye submit yourselves unto such and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. I am glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and a, a K. Oh goodness gracious, Achaeus, Achaicus. For that which was lacking on your part, they have supplied. For they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore acknowledge ye them that are such. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with a church that is in their house. All the brethren greet you. Greet ye one another with a holy kiss. The salutation of me, Paul, with mine own hand. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, maranatha. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And that word anathema means <laughs> hated, pretty much. Let him be accursed. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. And that was the Apostle Paul in the first book of Corinthians. And y'all, that is it for the first book of Corinthians. And that is it for <clears throat> me sharing with you today. <coughs> I feel like I'm getting asthma, and I don't know why. I'll go puff my puffer and go for another 10 or 12 hours.
bam, y'all, I love you. You and you and you and you and you and you and you. And all of you. God bless you, dear friend. Talk to y'all tomorrow. Either right here or up yonder. Wherever God has us.